Hey everybody, it's Scott Steen with winnersandwiners.com coming to you with the Monday edition of Today in Sports Betting. As always, I'm joined by my partner in crime. It is the one, the only Scott Reichel. Scott, going to take a look at a couple of NBA games here tonight, buddy. Are you excited? Uh, sure. I mean, NBA has been pretty kind over the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, uh, won the last two days, ended up winning with the Bulls Timberwolves over uh, yesterday, which was a pretty fun time. Game went pretty much the way I thought it would. D'Angelo Russell. What a dream over player. He can score about 26 points in only 27 minutes and plays no defense. Is there really anything more you want? Beautiful. That's pretty much, that's pretty much what you're looking for. How'd your weekend go? Uh, it was okay. Yeah, we did well. We had a profitable weekend. I'm just, uh, I'm, and I'm glad I didn't have it, but how about the Denver Nuggets and their tremendous uh, closing performance there in the fourth quarter? What a team. What did they score? Eight points? Eight points. Eight Not points. Bad. I don't even know how you do that. Uh, well, you got to put the ball in rarely and yeah. you end up with eight points. Yeah, you miss a ton of shots. I wonder. It's like a thirty-one to three one uh, run for Boston there. Okay, I'd like to know if that's the lowest total in the NBA this year for a quarter. It's yeah. got to be up. It's got to be up there. I mean, I, if you go like all time, I'm not sure how. No, many no, no. I'm talking about all. No, I'm talking about this year. No, I'm saying this year. I'm sure it is. I'm saying just in general. I don't really. I can't even think of a quarter that would be lower scoring unless it was like pre shot clock. I would think I would think five or six. I would think five or six too, assuming you don't really make a shot, maybe get to the line once or twice. But yeah, it's probably the lowest you've seen, not just this season, probably in the last couple of years. I mean, that's that's guess. embarrassing. That'd be my guess. Yeah, like you said, thirty-one to three run in the fourth quarter from Boston. Come on. Yep, not good. And this is the this and you want to be my latex salesman. Mm -hmm. This is the, this is the Denver team that people are starting to tout as a, a challenger in the West. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Not buying it. I don't buy it. I have more faith in Vanderlei Industries. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Good, 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 good. I know my Seinfeld. Okay, you never know about it. I never going to get that by me. I know my Seinfeld. I never know what TV shows you're uh, you're gonna you're gonna know. So I never know if it's going by or not. Nice job. Nice. Point. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, Scott, we've got a couple of TV games here, and it should be uh, should be interesting. We have got the disappointing Dallas Mavericks, who let me down yesterday as they ended up losing outright to. I don't know, one of the bottom – well, they're just the way they've been playing lately. is the, I want to know how many teams currently in the NBA you have a personal gripe with. Oh. oh. There's got to be a decent amount. The list is growing, too. I know it's growing, I, I, especially with the injury reports going on. But I feel like there are a couple of teams that I've added to a don't bet list, uh, mostly involving the Bulls and the Nuggets. Yeah. The Bulls did help me with the over today, so uh, yesterday, so maybe I can, you know, get a little bit off the fence. Denver, I mean, that's that's exactly why I don't trust Denver at all. But uh, well, I'd stayed away from the Mavs for a while. I don't, I don't think it was a, a personal vendetta, but they were, you know, they were playing a little better defense. I'm kind of wanted to see how this shakes out. And I'm like, okay, well, this is definitely two teams going in different directions. It's a decent spread, laying six, laying mm -hmm. six at home against the Spurs. Come on, never, never in it. They were, I don't, I don't know that they were ever covering the number. Just horrible game was close throughout. DeRosa made that big shot at the end of regulation, that's, but. That's what I'm saying. One, you're giving up 117 to San Antonio? Like, come on. Yeah, that's – yeah, so much for your great new defense. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing is, you know, I'm, I am, I'm very vindictive. If your team's not going to cover for me, then I hope they lose. I'm but, the same one. So. No, nobody can have any fun. No, nobody gets any fun. Mm -hmm. So, they go up against the 76ers, man. Um, Got to give a shout-out to the 76ers. They actually played and beat on a back-to-back. -back. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure you thought they wouldn't, huh? I did not, but then Tobias Harris didn't play against Oklahoma City, but it's Oklahoma City, so who cares? And they won anyway. But in this matchup, if you look at the actual spread, first of all, the two TV games we're going to talk about have no totals, so we're going to have to try to get creative. We're, yeah, we're, uh, going, to tell, we're, we're going to tell you exactly what these, what these numbers are. What exactly, end. without knowing who's going to play. Fantastic. Uh, but looking at the spread right now, it's Philadelphia minus two and a half. I know the last time we talked about Dallas off of a pretty embarrassing loss, they ended up beating uh, Milwaukee and covering. A little bit of a different story there because Milwaukee, of course, is still missing Giannis and just has looked awful since he's been out. And Philadelphia, with Embiid, without Embiid, still just looks like a really good basketball team. Well, you and know, I'm the one playing, I'm playing with Philly. They, they, they had a convincing win against Oklahoma City, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sold. Well, just saying in general, though, just you, you compare the two teams, I think you can agree Philadelphia is more reliable than Dallas. Sure. Okay. And, and it, the fact is, Dallas played yesterday, Philly didn't, so Philly should have everybody. I'm assuming Dallas will, too, after that embarrassing loss, but I can't trust Dallas here. Can you? No. No, and, you know, that's 
it's so frustrating because Dallas had covered six to seven going into yesterday. They won, won and covered six to seven. And Porzingis actually played well. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I look at the matchup down low. I know Porzingis is big or, you know, tall, but Embiid is big. <laughs> like, I don't think Porzingis can guard him. I think Embiid should probably have a big game there. You still have Tobias. Ben Simmons still, in my opinion, best premier defender in the league. You can agree or disagree on that, but I think he could do a pretty good job on Doncic. You can't really stop Doncic, but on a back-to-back, I think some fatigue might play a factor because he might have to work a little bit extra hard trying to get open shots on Simmons. Tybal's also a great defender. You bring him in. Still have Tobias. You still have a lot of options. The issue I have with Dallas is besides Porzingis and Doncic, do you really trust about Tim Hardaway Jr. as your third best option offensively? Yeah, I know. We always talk about this. I, I think, think we have to. I think that's the main issue I have with the team, not to mention the defensive issues. You know what? I think I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him one more chance. Okay. I'm going to. Uh, he 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 didn't really mean it. He's. I'm, he's, I'm going to wait on. I'm going to wait on the line movement for the morning, but just based on the spot here. I just think Philly's a team that I don't exactly want to be back. I, I don't want to be fading right now because they seem like they're kind of at least more put together than most other teams in the league at this point. Would you agree with that? Yeah. They, well, they have an identity, and that's something that a lot of teams in the NBA don't have. Well, there's, you know, there's that's the reason that they lead the lead the E. So yep. I'll go the other way. I'll okay. take I'll take I'll take Dallas. When all appears dark for Dallas. I'm not. No, I'm not deserting you, Mavs. I'll take the Mavericks in two and a half points, and I say, I say the this game ends at uh, one fourteen, one eleven. Mavericks two twenty five is your total. Oh, I was actually kind of funny. I was going <coughs> to total was going to be two twenty three and a half. Nice. Oh, uh, that's, that's, what, you're, that's what you're guessing. The total is going to be two twenty three and a half. Yep. I thought that you were calling. What's what, call? So call your score. What's it going to be? I think it's going to go under. Uh, I, I disagree with your stance there, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, um, we'll go 113 to 108. All right, 221. Yep, I think it'll be close to the total, but I'm going to go 223 and a half. 220, 221, whatever it takes. You have a guess on the total? I just said it. Oh, you said 220, 221. No, I, I know. Oh, you mean what I think it's going to be? Yeah. Not the score, just the total that you think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, I think I think the low to mid two twenties, two two twenty. I'll go with uh, I'll go a little high. I'll go two. I'll go two twenty five and a half. Okay, fair enough. All right. Okay, and moving on to the late game, Scott. It's going your other to... favorite team. Is your favorite team versus my favorite team? Oh my god. I kind of want to let you rant on your opinion on the Nuggets. I kind of want to just give you the floor for like a minute. Just it's not the it's not the Nuggets, dude. It's, it's... I was just gonna say. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it is. I was looking at Tuesday. Oh yeah. my God, you're right. I was it just is. gonna say. I'll I'll oh. I give you the floor for a minute so you can oh. just rant a little bit. No, I just I think you know I think I think we ran it the eight point rant. I got nothing else. What do you want me to say? They scored eight points in a quarter. How much do you want to suck? That's a fair point. No, awful. Just. And, you know, I, I want to like this team. I, you know, I do I do the radio thing there every week in Denver. And they're a team that if you actually – Talk about the Nuggets every week. And, they're a team know. if you look at the scores, you say to yourself, okay, this team's actually pretty good. And yeah. then you watch them play. I, I don't know if they just take have mental lapses about half the time or what the story is there, but don't they just seem disinterested for like five-minute stretches in the second half? All yeah, the and I'm sure that's not what it is, but – yeah, it does appear that way. First halves trailing by 17 to Orlando when you're laying 16. Like, I, I don't really know what they're doing half the time. No, well, you know, and they, they snuck by San Antonio in the game before Boston after beating them by 10 the night before. Uh, they, missed, they missed the number there. I I like the team on paper. I think they'll win a couple of playoff rounds, but I don't trust them on a game-to-game basis. Well, you want, you want to back Golden State here? Uh I think Golden State's so bad. Yeah, oh, it's such a tricky one. I think and I have and to. I saw. I thought. I saw Wiseman maybe out for the season. He's out for the year. He tore his meniscus. So I have to go with Denver. Assuming Jokic plays, how does he not put up like 30, 15, and twelve? They yeah. have no centers. They have Kevon Looney, who's not very good. That's it. We'll see, we'll see if Murray plays. That's always the big question mark. But at the end of the day, no Wiseman. This Golden State team was already a bottom three rebounding team in the league. How are they going to grab a rebound? Jokic is going to eat whoever he's he's guarding. Like he's they they got no shot to guard him. You think they do? We say that every time, you know. I'm just saying, like, what do you do? 
who's going to guard Jokic? And, you know, obviously not very many people can guard. Do you just go small, put like Draymond at the five and just say go nuts like you did earlier in the year? Like, can you really play Kevon Looney 30 minutes? I don't think he's very good. Yeah. So you I, zero offensively. I don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't know what you're supposed to do if you're Golden State. Yeah, I don't – you know, I Murray, Murray didn't play last night. If I was Golden State, I would probably go up tempo and try to push it. Denver is on a back-to-back, and this team plays relatively slowly. If you want to beat Jokic, I got to assume you got to make him run up and down the court. You got to do it with speed. He's he's such a cement foot plotter. That's what I'm saying. So my guess would be Golden State should probably go smaller and just go up and down. That'd be my guess. And are they going to do it? Probably not. But that's what I would do. Uh, so you're liking the over here? I think I have to. I mean, you're looking at these teams. Denver plays no defense at all, or they do occasionally, but they're not very good at it. And you look at Golden State. This team has been playing a little bit better defensively lately, but I just can't get over the fact that I do think Golden State should go into this game and say to themselves, they got Aaron Gordon and they got Jokic. So they actually have like an actual front court. They're not running really like a small four. I think they just got to go quickly. I like the over. You? Yeah, they've been, uh, they've been scoring pretty well lately. You know, yesterday, yesterday of course was the exception. But um, playing really, good team defense, does Denver have any actual like one on one stopper? Because I don't think they do. No, nah, they're more of a system team, I think. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. if Curry's going to keep dropping 30 plus in every game that he plays, of course, Draymond's a completely useless offensive player. I know he can pass the ball. Congratulations. He's, he scored like what, two points in the last three games combined? Like he, he can't do anything. Yeah, I can't. Uh... I just I think we're getting a good number there. I really do. For Denver or for Golden State? Uh for for Denver. Yeah. I, I have to agree. I think but without that horrible performance yesterday, if they if they would have just kept on winning and covering, they're probably lying four and a half or five. I was going to say five or five and a half even, but but yeah. based on this matchup, I got to go with the over. I mm-hmm. just think I think if Golden State wants to keep this game close, they have to play up tempo. So I'm going to go with the over. One twenty two, one fifteen, Nuggets. Okay. I still think Denver's going to end up covering in the end. I do think this game will come down to the wire, but I got to like the over. Yeah, give me some scramble points here at the end. That is uh, that, uh, that is the most reluctant play that, you know, we've made. So we, don't, we don't have a number. So, I mean, we got to try to no, – I'm just something. talking about – I'm just talking about back in the Nuggets after that. Absolutely. These are two teams that we don't trust, but I will acknowledge that if you look at the roster with Wiseman's injury, even before Wiseman's injury, Denver is just miles ahead in terms of talent. Yep, agreed. So. Agreed. Agreed. So, hopefully Murray will be back, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that number go to four and a half or so by game time. Yep, sounds about right. Lock up the Nuggets, minus three and a half. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Uh, you know, I still have to make a play today video, so I don't really know what I actually want to do. Okay. But looking at some other matchups here, I'm just going to ask, not, it's not because of an overreaction because this team actually won yesterday. Do you have any thoughts on San Antonio minus six against Orlando? You know, I looked at that. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite ready to. Uh... I don't know if I'm ready to lay six with San Antonio, but Orlando. Yeah, they're not good. We talked about how Milwaukee struggled without Giannis. That game yesterday by Orlando was just a complete disgrace. I know that your team is tanking, and I know that I haven't been able to figure out Orlando uh, since they trade everyone. It seems like every time I try to fade them, they end up like you know kicking my ass. But you're looking at this matchup here. You had 38 points in the first half. He scored yeah. less than 21 points in three of the four quarters. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. But, I mean, you lost by 37 at home. I, I, if I was going to play it, I'd take San Antonio. But that's just a game I thought was worth mentioning. But I'll mention one game before we actually wrap up. You have the Nets laying 10 against Minnesota. Nets coming in off that embarrassing loss against uh, Los Angeles. Uh, you have Minnesota, who ended up winning uh, yesterday against Chicago. These teams played about two weeks ago or so. Uh, I believe Brooklyn was laying 11 and a half. Uh, Minnesota ended up covering. Game was pretty close at the end. Kyrie's not playing for personal reasons, whatever that means, again. Uh, Nets are still laying 10. Do you think the Nets with Durant have a bounce back performance here, or do you think that they struggle? I'm, on, I'm actually on the opinion they're going to struggle. I think, I think Minnesota keeps it close. I do. I think 10's too many points. Yep, yep. I think 10's too many to lay without Kyrie. Yep. That's how I feel. All right, so here's – I'm, I'm going to give you – Two plays that look really obvious. Okay. And I don't know. I, and I haven't, I haven't really come up with a final opinion yet. But Lakers, Lakers and Knicks, the obvious play there is the under. 
Um, you got it at 205 and a half or 206. And you've got two of the worst defenses in the league as New Orleans goes up against New, uh, Sacramento. And that's 231 and a half. I'm probably more tempted by the over there. I think that's a, I think that's a decent number. It's, 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 it's almost like they're daring us to take the over. It, it feels seems, that way. What's that? It feels that way. Then again, with back-to-backs, I know Ingram's barely played since he came back, and Zion yeah. is always a threat to miss games. I don't think that he's going to miss this game. No. Nope. But I, I think I have to like the over. I am a little bit concerned that the last meeting these teams had uh, ended up totaling in the uh, high 220s. So they were right around the number, but they didn't yep. get there, which I find a little bit interesting. But I feel like I have to look at New Orleans and just – continue taking the overs. I mean, you're looking through these games. I know they had a low-scoring game against Philly. Uh, they ended up winning yesterday. So you'd have to wonder about back-to-backs against Cleveland. Cleveland has a pretty awful offense, one of the worst offenses in the league. Still gave up 109. Uh, I hate the Sacramento team with a passion. Uh, but New Orleans appears to finally realize if they give the ball to Zion 30 times a game, he'll score 38. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. I'm I, the, pro, the play I probably like better there is a uh, Zion over whatever his points are. And they're probably going to be high. Probably going to be. It should probably be either high twenties or low thirties at this. I was going to say yeah. I was going to say thirty and a half or something like that. I, I would still I, like the over as long as Brandon Ingram acknowledges that this guy needs to shoot more than him. He should get over every time because he's shooting yeah. about sixty something percent from the floor. Yeah, he's he's a monster, dude. No question about it. Yeah. All right, there you go. As always, if you're looking for information on these games or any other games, there is just one stop after our videos. Of course, that is winnersandwiners.com. Deep dives and predictions into every game every single day. And, of course, for myself, for Scott Reichel, for all of us over here at Winners and Winners, we appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, of course, if you haven't done so already. And we wish you nothing but the best today. Hope every one of those tickets in your pocket turns into cash money back at the window. You guys have a great day and we'll see you next time on today in sports betting.